Amen. Well, the title of today's message, it's, it's called Plant, Planted in the Prosperity of Christ. Planted in the Prosperity of Christ. You see the theme with the apples and celery and stuff. And yesterday we were out doing our apple picking. I was like, I could have just took pictures here <laughs> and been all set. But we're in a, a, a time of, you know, we celebrate the harvest, but there's some things that God is doing in this time, in this season, in our midst, praise God. And, and what he's showing us is that he's moving us from one place to another. We talk about progression. We talk about spiritual growth and maturity. And I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm greatly encouraged at the things that I'm seeing, the things that where I believe that God is bringing us up into. And, and we have to be able to grab hold of these truths so we can move forward and what God's calling us up into. That, Alicia, this morning, your exhortations are right on point. You're right, you're right where I believe we need to be. I turned to Ben and I said, she's reading my notes. She's in my notes this morning. Praise God. I'm, I love it when two or three come together in agreement. Amen. It is settled. It is in our midst. Praise God. And so I'm believing that there are some things. How many of y'all believe for something more, something greater? Yeah. I'm, I'm believing for a better tomorrow than I am my today. Amen. And this is what the Lord has been showing me. This is what I've been speaking. This, is, this has, has been reverberating in my spirit that a lot of times we're focused on today when we really need to be focused on tomorrow, right? So we're praying over current situations, praying over our, our current day, but we need to be focusing on next week. We need to be focusing on next month, getting ready, the right version of you, amen? We're praying out into the future. We're asking God not for the stuff, but we're asking God for the being. What am I becoming? What am I stepping up into? And then God is making preparation. My prayers are going out into my future, inspecting where am I going to be? And if I'm off course, it begins to set things on course right now in this time and in this place, amen? Somebody say, God, speak to me. Set me on course. Set me on that right path. Look at it. You don't have to turn there, but, but I want you to look at this. 1 John 2 8. This is great. 1 John, he says, Again, a, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is in him and in you. But watch what he says because the darkness is passing away and true light is already shining. You see that? That second clause is powerful. Powerful. Because the darkness is passing away, ignorance is passing away. Hard times are passing away. Those are all things of your present and of your past, but we are moving forward into the light, the revelation, the blessing, the callings, the anointing, the new life in Christ Jesus, and it says that the light is already shining. Isn't that good news? That, that means that my tomorrow is in, is in the light. My tomorrow is, is, is under the, 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 the impression, it's under the influence of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm moving forward into that tomorrow, and by faith, I'm seeing it and I'm pulling it down into my reality. Amen? That's what prayers are all about. Old things passing away. We have to believe and exercise our ability to believe collectively. Our ability to believe together. That sometimes when I'm praying, what I need is somebody to come alongside in agreement because that agreement has power. It holds me on course. When I'm getting tired or frustrated, somebody else comes in and begins to crank up my faith again. And likewise, I do the same for them. Amen? So collectively, we're coming together. We're building faith. And so as we are reading through our Bibles, how many of y'all like to read your Bibles? I know some of y'all really, I love to read my Bible. My Bible is saying this. My Bible is saying that. Praise God. Your Bible is saying what my Bible is saying. Amen. But it talks about end times. It talks about the times and the things that, that, that are passing away, these last days. And, and what we have to realize is that the last th days, it means that something is passing away. But remember, the light is already shining that this old thing is going away, but the light is already set. It is my future. It is, it, is, it is where I am going. I have to believe and I confess every single day things are getting better. Things are get, Don't I say that all the time, Michelle? Well, I say all the time, but don't worry. Things are getting better. It's, it's going to be a brighter tomorrow. And sometimes, even though I may not visually see a bright tomorrow, I speak of a bright tomorrow until I believe it. Amen? I come in, I get stirred up, I get fired up. I don't need somebody to fire me up. I'll fire you up, amen? I'm ready to, I'm ready to, I'm ready to go somewhere today. Praise God, praise God. Y'all, get quiet, everybody get quiet. <laughs> amen, amen. So we're pushing, we're pushing into this next thing. So I understand, what is increasing in your life? The kingdom of God should be increasing in your life, amen? God's divine influence increasing in your life, Amen. And, and, and so our, our rule, our reign, the reign of God in our lives should be increasing day by day. Amen? I'm going to spend some time this morning in Isaiah chapter 61. 
and I'm going to spend some time in, in 1 John. All right? I'm going to spend some time in these two books. So you might want to find them first, right? So find Isaiah 61. We're going to start there. And then we're going to move into 1 John, which is not the Gospel of John, but it's in the back of the book near Jude and Revelation. You can start counting backwards and finding 1 John. But Isaiah 61, if you've been around the river for a while, should be no stranger to you. This is something the Lord's been speaking over us for many years, right? And I believe that, I believe that every day we are, are more and more putting on the calling of what's in Isaiah 61. This is the kingdom of God. This is the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and step forward into these things. This is what Jesus quoted when he said that, you know, in, in this day, uh, this, this, this scripture is fulfilled in your midst. This is what he was quoting. So starting Isaiah 61.1, it says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. That means that when the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ comes upon me, it is my job. It means there's something powerful that is taking place. I will preach. I will publish. I will prophesy. I will put the Word of God out there. I will demonstrate it in my life. Why? Because the Spirit is on me. Amen? And so, um, verse 2, he continues, he says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, amen, and the day of vengeance of our Lord. You see that? So in other words, it's the acceptable year. This is the good news. This is the gospel. This, this, is, this is the time of the Lord. It's the time of God in your life. For somebody in this room, you got to understand, you might be going through seasons. You might be having a hard time. But I'm telling you, today, it is the day of the Lord in your life. Amen? And then he says also the vengeance of, of God. Hopefully that's not you. <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's not, you know, that's, that's for sinners. Those are for those who are on the outside, but for the children of God, it's the acceptable, the preachable year of the Lord. Amen. He says also to comfort those who, who mourn. That's the weary and the heavy laden. Those are those who are, are, are tired. Those, those are those who need something to hang on to. But it's also those whose lives are broken up by sin. Right? To comfort those who, who mourn. Verse 3 says to console, or better yet it says to anoint those who mourn in Zion. It means that you're, you're, you're engaging those who are mourning in Zion. And what is Zion? Zion is the city of God, the holy city of God. It's the redeemed. It's the redeemed of the Lord. But to anoint them and to uh, uh, appoint them, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness, What's happening? It's a transition. It's a turning around. Amen. It's new life. It's the transformation. You're coming from a lowly, messed up state into something that is holy, righteous, and empowered. Amen. In other words, I don't have time to be miserable Christian. It's my time to be joyful. It's my time to be filled with praise. It's my time to step out from old things into the newness of life. To get into the power and the presence of God joyfully. Amen. Not always crying and I'm, I'm a messed up wreck and no good. No, that was me. That's my yesterday. Matter of fact, that might even be my present, but it will not be my tomorrow. That's my testimony. That is my testimony before the world. But I see that you got problems. I said, yes, but you have problems too. But my problems are not the same problems I had yesterday. I got a whole new set of problems. Amen. But my new problems are in the hands of the Lord, not in the hands of this world, not in the hands of any man, woman, or child. My problems are between me and God. I'm safe in his hand. Amen? Can anybody say that today? Amen. I'm with you. I'm in that place. Hallelujah. And he continues, and watch, this is what I love, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Trees represent strength. Trees represent power. Trees represent things that are of old. Things that are renowned. Amen. Praise God. But we would be called the trees of righteousness. Righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. That's why we're singing this morning. God be glorified. Be glorified in my life. What does it mean that we say God be glorified? What does it mean that, that God would be glorified? It means that, that everything he is that makes him God is now revealed. 
Every, and, and, and so when he is, he is glorified in you, that means that now you have become the example of what it is to be godly, that there's godliness on the inside of you, that God is revealed inside of you, on you, in your life, in your home, in the places where you dwell. You're no longer uh, an, an alien. You're no longer on the outside looking in. I'm now part of the kingdom of God. I am now inside the kingdom. I am now a living stone that is being built up with other living stones to be a, a place of dwelling for God and spirit. Amen? Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. I'm excited. Amen. But then after that comes the promises of those who walk in such blessings. For them and for their future generations. You can read through the, the rest of that chapter, but it says, you know, it talks about their children. It talks about strangers coming and feeding their flocks and building their walls. It talks about old cities being rebuilt and being restored. Hallelujah. And I believe as I have read through that in Isaiah chapter 60, time and time again, God has said to me, I am rebuilding the family. I am rebuilding the things that were lost. I am rebuilding things that were lost generationally and that things will be set in order in this generation and the generations that will follow. And I believe that this is something that God is doing powerfully. And this morning, God began to speak to me something a little bit different. I don't want to go too far off course, but it's so important because we have been praying over this. The things that we have been praying and declaring, I'm watching over these things. And I believe that God is doing a new thing inside of our bodies. Not just mine, not just Carmen, not just Cindy, but I'm talking about God doing new works on the inside of our bodies to give us strength for the things and the days and the hours that are yet ahead because we dwell in His presence, because we dwell in His, in, in, in his, in his presence and, and in the praise and in the worship and, and in the work and the things of God. I mean, how many of y'all need God to do something new in your body? Yeah, we're talking about I need a new liver. I need a new mind. I need a, I need, I need a new heart. I need, I, 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 need to be, I need to be mounted up on wings like an eagle. I, I want to be restored to my youth. And I keep looking and I'm like, I know, I know, I know that God will do these things. And I believe that that's part of what he's saying in Isaiah chapter 60 and also in Isaiah chapter 58. You begin to walk through the rebuilding of these cities. That you, sometimes you got to stand in the mirror and tell the person, I'm that city that's being rebuilt. I am that city that is being rebuilt by the power of God, making declarations over your own life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm, I'm preaching in the spirit, man. I hope you guys are getting this. Amen. Praise God. Now, now flip over if you would. Flip back to, uh, flip over to 1 John chapter 2. I want us to catch, whew, catch this. Hallelujah. My abs are going to be sore after today. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it today. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 1 John chapter 2. Look, look at this, uh, starting in verse 15. Look at this admonishment to come into the kingdom and to operate kingdom-wise. The, 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 it, it, this is beautiful. He says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. He said, If anybody loves the world and the love of the Father is not in him, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Do you see that? That, that is, see right now, a lot of people are focused on all the stuff in the world. We're chasing after, so we're trying to, to, to be worldly and put a Christian label on it so God will bless it. I mean, God doesn't operate that way. Amen? If somebody's blessing it, it's probably not God. Amen? So what we want to do is to look and say, you know what? I, I don't want to chase after the things of the world. I'm going to do what Matthew 6.33 says. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and believe that God will add every other thing to it. But first I must seek the kingdom of God. First I must seek Him and seek His will. And what he's saying is love God. Don't love the things of this world. He said, all that's passing away. And so we look at that. We understand it as, as turning away from the darkness the ignorance of this world, and turning to the light, the Lord Jesus Christ. Turning to the light, which is the Word of God, which is being applied to our natural lives even now. We're putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is called transformation. Say the word transformation. You are becoming new. You're becoming a new being in Christ Jesus. Amen? And so as we are exposed to the light, which is the truth of God, which is the glory of God revealed, we come to despise sin. Is, you hear that? You come to despise sin, which is the lust of the things of this world. And we begin to develop an appetite for the things of the kingdom of God. Does that make sense? So in other words, the things I was once hungry for, I had an appetite for. Now my appetite is not towards that anymore. 
I said, those things will come, but first, I seek the kingdom of God. Now I have an appetite for the things, the glory of the kingdom of God. I'm not trying to make it look like, I'm not trying to make the, the kingdom of God look like the world. I'm not trying to dress up the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is glorious. It doesn't need to be dressed up. Amen? It needs to be exposed. It needs to be put out there. And then they'll watch all other things begin to come together. And I'll tell you what, if you will operate by faith, if you'll operate by faith, you begin to proclaim the truth, the things of the kingdom of God, they will come to you like moths to a light. Was it Jonathan Edwards that said, set yourself on fire and the world will gather to watch you burn. To understand what that means. Get on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be popular? Get on, get on, get on fire for the Lord and watch, watch how popular you can get. Watch, watch how you begin to, to change atmospheres that are around you. You're not so concerned about what I look like. And people are very interested in people who are not that concerned. Amen? That, wait a minute. Why are you like you are? Because I have faith in God. Why do you have the energy? Because I have the faith in God. How can you be so old and still be so young? Because I'm being renewed day by day by day. I did not look at you, Charlotte. I did not look at you. She was like, that's me. That's me. I was old, but now I'm young. Hallelujah. I'm moving into the deeper things. Ah, Charlotte, me and you, June, let's get it. Amen. That really happened in the front row here. But God is good. Amen. So we start to develop these appetites. Actually, you're not developing an appetite. The appetite that you're getting, you're not only developing that, but the appetite that you're getting is a reflection of, of the kingdom of God growing in you. It's evidence that the kingdom of God is growing in you. You're conquering the mountains. Amen. I'm conquering mountains. I'm conquering the, the territories. The kingdom of God is conquering my mountains and my territories. It's conquering the darkness of my fallen nature until all things are new. And so if you've not yet been perfected, and I don't know if many people in here have, but you're at a place where you're still fighting between the light and the dark. You don't understand the fullness of, of, the, of the mountains and the territories of what it is that makes up your being. But the kingdom of God is conquering each territory one at a time. It is a, a, an example. It's, it's a foreshadowing of the things that are happening in the earth because ultimately the kingdom of God will conquer every kingdom of this earth. Amen. And then we'll have the glory, the full glory of the kingdom of God. That's, that's, that's reigning in high places. Hallelujah. Kingdom of, of heaven, kingdom of earth coming together and becoming one. So as we look at this, and, and we're going to back up a few verses, verses but as the Apostle John uh, uh, begins to address these stages that we go through, stages of growth and, and spiritual maturity. And we've, we've, we've done this before as a church, and we should do it every year. And I say that every year, but we don't always do it every year. But we're going to do it this year and next year. Amen. And so what we want to do is to take a look at this because God is revealing some powerful things in this time. And so as we're, as we're walking through it, um, there, there's three levels that he actually addresses. He talks about there being small children or little children young men, and, and fathers. You know, we talk about maturity, that sometimes you read the King James Version, it talks about perfection. It's not just, or completeness, that we're being made complete in Christ. We're being, we're, we're being transformed as we are growing in this place of maturity. And I, and I want to look at it from a perspective of being trees of righteousness, right? Three stages of, of, of our humanity might be small child and, and, and young man and father, but we can look at the, the stages of maturity in terms of being mature trees, right? And then you have your seedling, you have your sapling, and you have a strong tree. And so I want you to understand when you first come into the kingdom of God, you come in as a seed. When the kingdom of God first comes to you, it comes to you as a seed, right? And then it continues to grow till it's the greatest of all the trees. And that's what's happening in your life. You, you are, are coming in as a seed, but then you will grow and become a seedling and a sapling and ultimately become a strong tree, a mature tree. Amen? Amen. So as we read through the passage, I want you to pay close attention, not only to the different levels, but to the, the, the tenses of the Scripture. Some are in the past tense and some are in the, the future tense. Okay, so the focus on, on the present is often distracting us, and that's what we want to address today. Where our focus needs to be. Our focus does not just need to be on today, it needs to be on tomorrow, right? To be solely, solely focused on today, it's detrimental to our tomorrow. And the Bible says, the Bible tells us to cast our bread upon the waters, right? Because what? It will come back to you after many days. And that's why we need to be praying out into our future. That's why we've got to be seeing this which is out ahead of us. 
so that when that day comes, we're ready. We're already changed. We're already transformed. We're already moving into that newness of life. Amen? Praise God. So 1 John 2, 12, listen. He says, I write to you little children, seeds. I write to you seeds. <laughs> because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So John is, is, is writing with a, with a warning to be watchful about false teaching and to be mindful of the things of God. And he's addressing their identity uh, in terms of, of, of being part of a family of believers. You got to understand what, what he's talking about here. The entire letter, you begin to read through the letter, he's saying you're, you're coming into the kingdom as small children and that there's going to be a lot of deception along the way. And he's saying, you know, so hold your ground. He says in verse 13, I write to you fathers, amen, those are the mature trees. Any mature trees in here? Yeah, amen, fathers, amen, praise God. He said, because you have known him who is from the beginning. So he's talking to the mature here, and, he, and he's drawing on their, their knowledge of God, their knowing of God, and drawing on their wisdom, and drawing on their authority to keep order and to raise up coming generations. So many of us now are being raised, that we may not be fathers yet, but, but, but we are moving into a place, a spiritual fatherhood is what I'm talking about. You may not be there yet, but you know what? I'm talking forward to myself to the day that, that I'm mature enough that now I'm ready to reproduce in the kingdom of God. See? You see, I write to you because you've known him for, for, for who is the beginning. And I write to you young men, right? The saplings, right? Your saps, you sappy saplings, amen? Because you've overcome the wicked one. That is so significant of a statement because you've overcome. Even, even at this young, immature place of faith, you've already overcome the wicked one, isn't it? You, you understand sometimes, or maybe we don't understand, we think the devil is running buckshot all over our lives. But even at a young stage of maturity, it didn't say you defeated the, the wicked one, but you've overcome him. Jesus is ultimately the victor, but you're the overcomer. You're the one that he can't hold on to. You've, you've already got it. He says, so I write to you. Here's evidence that you are a young man in the Lord, that you have had some victories. How many of you had some victories? And, and so it's, it's not just a matter of I had a victory. It's like I know how to get to the victory. I'm, I'm operating by the principles of the kingdom of God. And once I have defeated him once or overcome him once, I know how to do it over and over and over again. You know, they tell you, you know, well, you know, new levels, new devils. Right, then you've heard that before. So if I can handle them on level two, I can get to level four. All I have to do is learn some new principles. All I have to do is get a bigger belt. You know, I don't wear the same belt size I did when I was four years old. Amen. I got a bigger belt. I can carry bigger tools. Amen. Ready to go after the deeper things of God. Ready to, 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 to move as a sapling in the Lord. Amen. You've overcome even at a young state. Though not fully mature, you've learned the principles of the kingdom of God and that you use them and you are using them and to get free of the darkness and to overcome the darkness. The darkness has no hold on you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He said, I write to you little children because you have known the Father. Then comes the, the, the no, now watch this. Notice he said that to the young children twice. That's significant. Right? I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. But then comes this change to the past tense, meaning I wrote to you in the past. Right? I have written to you. I've written to you in the past. In other words, I wrote to your past self about who your future is going to be. So the evidence of it there is that he never wrote in the past tense to small children. Because who was he going to write to? They weren't born yet. They weren't yet in the kingdom. So they could only be present tense for their tomorrow. You see that? Verse 14, he said, I've written to you fathers, or those who will be fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you young men, those who will be young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. The significance of what this means. In other words, you are not a victim. You are not a victim of circumstance but you are in control of your destiny in Christ Jesus. I have given it over to him. And so he says, first of all, because you have known the Father. What does it mean to know the Father? That means that you have known love. That means you have known him from who is from the beginning. means that you have access to ancient wisdom. To know who your family is. If I've known the Father, then I know his other children. Amen. And so I know you as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I understand the calling of us as believers for today. So important for us to be able to walk these things out. So we look at these things, and so as we're going from stage to stage, we're talking about spiritual growth and maturity. 
next year. I don't want to be the same as I was this year. If I'm going to be a father now, I'm going to be a father next year. I want to be a, a father of more next year. I want to be a father of increase next year. I want to be a better father than I was last year. And so if I'm a father of, of a, 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 an infant, then, then in 10 years I'm going to be a father of a teenager. Praise God. You, you understand how this is working? There's that change that's happening. You start to look at, and for you, those of you raising up kids today, just look at them today and just realize they won't always be like this. Some of y'all are like, praise God. Praise God. And by the way, speak over them. You're only going to be better. You're only going to be better. But the blessings of God are set upon you when you come into this house and begin to speak the glory of God. Someone said, I can't wait for you to you have teenagers. You look at them and say, I can't wait either. Praise God. Because it's going to be good. But you know what they were like with my kids? Well, those are your kids. Those ain't my kids. Amen. That's what you tell your kids, right, Erica? You know, well, those are their kids. They ain't my kid. And so you will walk out. Whew, I feel that on you. I feel that over you. you got an anointing to declare some things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we look, we talk about growth. My Christian growth. My growth in the Spirit. You ever notice that some people come right into the kingdom of God and they begin to grow and increase and move, you know? Other people come in and they stay. You know, they never seem to change. They never seem to, 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 to mature. They, they, they're always kind of like going around the same mountain again and again. And nothing ever seems to change. But others come in and they just get lit up and they start going after the deeper things of God. Hey, by the way, if you're a new believer, make up your mind to be in that category. And make, make up your mind. So if you're going to come to the river, make up, make up your mind to grow. Make up your mind to do something greater, to do something more. I, I feel, y'all feel an anointing in this? Everybody who feels an anointing, let me see. Okay, everybody else dismissed. Amen. <laughs> but what do I do? Watch this. Watch. What do I do to increase my rate of growth? What, what do I do? How, how do I grow faster? What, do, what is it that I must do? If I'm ready, and I'll say, you know what? I'm, I'm hitting the end of my line. I, I know I say it a lot, and it's so true. What, what, I know I'm ready to grow when I can look and I can say, there's got to be more to the kingdom of God than what I'm seeing. There has to be more than this. I'm hearing it, I'm sensing it, but I'm not able to achieve it. And so that's a hunger, it's a groaning. I want to get from here to there. What must I do to get from here to there? I want to increase my rate. I want to, by this time next year, this is where I want to be. What must I do? Sometimes we look and say, well, what is it that's stunting my growth? Why am I not growing? I know I'm meant to grow. I know I'm meant to be something more and be more effective. I, I, I know there's something more, but something's stopping me from getting there. What do you do to actually change this? What are our address today? We talk about because you've been planted in the prosperity of Christ. How do you all know that Jesus Christ is good soil? The kingdom of God is good soil. It must produce. The things, remember Jesus walked up to the fig tree and it wasn't producing fruit? He said he found nothing but leaves. And he cursed that tree because those type of trees don't belong in the kingdom of God. It doesn't serve his purposes. But those that serve his purposes some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, that God produces growth inside of those. We said it earlier today, one seeds and other waters, but what? God gives the increase. Sometimes we've got to get in that mirror. We've got to get fierce. We've got to get on fire and say, God, increase inside of me. I want the increase, Lord God. Here am I. Fill me. Hallelujah. Whew. Amen. If we're walking by faith, then our rate of growth is gated only by the will of God. If we're walking in faith, we're only limited by the will of God. And if our walk is other than faith in God, then we're often gated by outside factors. It's outside things that are keeping us from moving forward. How many of y'all feel pressure from outside things? It's like, yeah, I'm ready. I know what to do, God. I'm going to do it. But I have so many outside things that are blocking me from getting there. Anybody ever feel that way? Yeah, sometimes. I feel that way sometimes. But you know what I found out? It was a lie. I found out it wasn't true. I found out I just wasn't moving the way that God wanted me to. I found out there's something more that I should be doing. And when I begin to come into alignment with the things of God, boom, there is breakthrough. But God comes through every time. Amen. Say that with me every time. Uh, sometimes you say, this time, <laughs> now time. Amen. This is my time. This is my hour. Praise God. What must I do? I want to increase my rate of growth. Anybody? I want to increase my rate of growth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Step number one, nurture an enthusiastic, faithful prayer life. Nurture 
an enthusiastic, faithful prayer life. You know, we're going through the orchard yesterday and we're taking a ride and they had all the saplings and, and, and the small trees and they were all uh, uh, on, on rebar. They're all taped up so that they could grow. And, and remember, Michelle, we were talking to them about the, the good apples. Yeah. They said, well, you have to take another train to get the good apple. And then they started to tell us about the price. And I said, well, I got a good apple tree in my yard that produces the same apples. Right? And then she started to tell us about why they're so expensive. And the reason why the, the other apples were more expensive is because it took a whole lot more nurturing and, and growing and, and attention to those apples than the cheap apples that I got. Amen. How I many I like cheap apples? I, was, I, I like apples, man. Apples are apples. Amen. You got an apple joke? No, not today, huh? <laughs> Poor Lewis bombed yesterday publicly. It was, it was embarrassing. Praise God. You can only go so far as your prayer life can carry you and sustain you. Amen? You can only go so far. There's things that I'm called, I'm going to move forward, I'm going to step out. But when you do, the enemy is going to come against you because you're moving in the power and in the practices of the Lord. In other words, once he has set up, um, once, once the enemy has set up an encampment and you try to get free, he's going to come back and try to protect his investment. You can, you can bet your bottom dollar. However, if you have an effective prayer life, you can fend off the attacks of the enemy. And God's not going to bring you into a place where you cannot fend off the attack that the enemy is going to bring against you. You got to understand that. And we have to learn how to pray, right? You got to learn to pray in, in the joy of the Lord. How many of you pray joyfully? It could be a bad situation, but I'm going to still pray with a big smile on my face. Hallelujah. I'm going to press through. We've got to learn to pray joyfully. We've got to learn to pray with power. Amen. And we need to learn to pray in the presence of God. So in other words, I'm praying, but I'm always praying in the presence of God. I expect God's just going to hear me because I mumbled it out to Him, or am I going to get into the power, the presence, the atmosphere where, the, where, where, where God's presence is manifest and then begin to release my prayers with prayer and with supplication and with thanksgiving, making all of my requests be made known unto God that there is something that is different that happens when we are praying in the Spirit and we are praying in the presence of God and what God has been speaking to the church, what God has been speaking to you, what God has been speaking to me is find the principle, find the key and operate accordingly. Take that key, put it in the lock and begin to pull on the gates of heaven. Begin to pull forth what God has for you. I'll tell you what, if you do this, you're going to see a whole nother level of prayers answered and a Effective, but get ready to go for it. Amen? You, I mean, when I say get ready to go for it, it means you can't be timid. You can't be ashamed. You can't be embarrassed. You've got to have tenacity. You've got to tenaciously go after it. When God gives you the key, write the key down and make sure that you are shouting it to the atmosphere. Many people, God has given you the key, but you're, you're, you're afraid to use it. You're ashamed to use it. But God has said, if you will do this, watch what I will do. In other words, stop trying to do me your way. But do God God's way. Amen. Do, do what He is showing you how to do. He's, he's, not, he's not speaking to you like a small child anymore. He's speaking to you like a young man at this point because that's the only way you're going to get from childhood to manhood. Amen? Get ready to go for that something more. Amen. Two gating factors to your growth and success in the kingdom of God. Number one will be prayer. The second one is character. Your character. We're going to deal with character in a minute. Amen. But let's deal with prayer for now. The stronger your prayer life, the greater the power of your proclamation. Or in other words, you're out there, you're making declarations and proclamations, and maybe you're hearing other people pray things, and, and that sounds good, I'm going to pray that too. And, but you're making the proclamations, but you're not seeing the results. Why am I not seeing the, seeing the results? Are you coming from a strong platform of prayer, of knowledge of God? He said, remember the demon, this kind only comes out by prayer and by fasting. So we got to understand there has to be a lifestyle of prayer. And when I'm praying, I'm building a platform, an altar that I'm actually working from. And the altar, by the way, is not for God to hear my prayers. It's for me to hear his voice and his direction. So we're actually pulling down. We're offering up sacrifices of praise. But we are pulling down the wisdom and the knowledge and the direction of Abba Father. Amen? If we get this and we begin to understand, and we got to move forward, I say this, your proclamation is powerful. Say that. My proclamation is powerful. My proclamation is powerful. And you have to believe it. Keep saying it. Because faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. And so you're making declaration and proclamations. I'll tell you what, sometimes they lose power because they're off. 
However, when you are praying in the Holy Spirit, He has a way of bringing correction to the things that we are proclaiming and then bringing the power behind it. Amen? It's not crazy. You know, sometimes, we hear, you know, sometimes you hear somebody else praying, like, that sounds good. I'm going to pray that. And other people are like, I don't want to copy them. I don't want to copy them. Copy them. You find somebody who can pray, pray like they pray. Amen. You see somebody that is bringing up, I mean, go grab that, bring it down, make it your own. Research it, make sure it's on track, but go after that thing. But don't rely on somebody else to do the work. You got to put work in. Amen. Jude, uh, I said 120, but Jude 20 because there's only one chapter in Jude. All right. If you're ever trying to read your Bible, and you're like, I just want to read one book today, but I don't have time. Read Jude. Read Jude. You'll be done in two minutes. Amen. But look at Jude 120. This is powerful. He says, but you, beloved, you, beloved children of God, building yourselves up in a most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You see that? You're building up a most holy faith. And what are you doing? Praying in the Holy Spirit. Why are you praying in the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit knows what He's talking about. He understands. He knows the end from the beginning. He's giving you the keys that you need. So we pray in the Holy Spirit. And by the way, I know it says, it's not just praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is good. But I'm talking about praying in the Holy Spirit or allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you to bring the will of God to pass here in the earth. He says, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God. See that? I'm praying in the Holy Spirit and what am I doing? Keeping myself. I'm keeping myself by praying in the Holy Spirit. In other words, what am I doing, Gladys? I'm keeping myself together. What are you doing? I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Why are you praying in the Holy Ghost? Because I don't have it together. And I'm going to get it together. I'm going to keep it together. I'm going to keep myself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ until the eternal end. Amen? We get closer to God by praying in the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God praying through us. And very, very powerfully, I want to bring this up a few times. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring it up before we leave. Because when we pray in the Holy Spirit, uh, the, the error in our prayers is refined out. The error, sometimes you pray in error, right? You, 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 ask, you, you ask and you don't receive, or sometimes you ask you ask amiss and you don't receive because you're not, you're not doing it the right way. But if you pray in the Holy Spirit, He's going to refine all of that out and your prayers now will be potent. It's like, you know, it's like the, the, the tide. You get the tide to, to wash your clothes. You can get the tide regular, the tide concentrate, right? Concentrate is supposed to work better because it's not watered down, right? Don't water down prayer. How many of y'all like, I'm strapped for time, so I have a hard time praying sometimes I don't have time? Squeeze the water out. <laughs> Go for the gusto, amen. Go for the good stuff. So this shirt's going to come out clean in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So number one is a nurture and an enthusiastic, prayerful prayer life. Number two, build an intentional life of devotion. Build an intentional, intentional, intentional life of devotion. Or in other words, I'm putting the effort in. I'm making room in my calendar. My time of devotion can't be two minutes here and there because that's not devoted whatsoever. Amen? But I'm, I'm, I'm making room for God in my life. I'm becoming an intentional, faithful follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm becoming an intentional, faithful follower, a seeker of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we begin to, to really operate, I'll tell you what, you don't think you have time, God will make the time to, to give the time back. It's amazing. We find time to do the things that we want to do. We find time to do the things that bring us joy. But sometimes that's just the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And that's what we're finding time for. But are we finding time for the things of the kingdom of God? We'll talk about that and about devotion. You know devotion and character is tied together? Devo your devotion to God and your character is tied together. God won't let you get out of character when you're intentionally following after Him. And, and, and I want to I just touch this because it's so important. We are at a place where we are getting ready to reproduce in the kingdom of God. How many are ready to see more of you in the kingdom of God? More people just like you in the kingdom of God. I'm like, I don't know. I don't think you can only handle so much of me, right? But if I could just be refined, you know, if I, if, if I could just do better, you know, it would be like Paul and say, just follow me as I follow Christ. Don't, don't follow all of this. Just follow me as I follow Christ. Just, just do the Christian thing. Just, just do the, the good follower thing. If I could just do that, then we'd be good. Amen? And so we, we come to this place. Uh, Philippians 2. Paul begins to give testimony of Timothy. Right? Paul had, by the way, many Timothys. 
Paul had many people that he poured into, that he sowed into. Timothy gets all the attention. And by the way, they were men and women. I want to make that ex extremely clear. You begin to read through the Word, and he's saying, greet this one, greet that He's walking down a list of men and women and those who co-labored together with him in the Gospel. I want to bring that up because so many times people are saying we can't do that. I'm like, we need to do that. We need to, I, that's like walking around with one leg, Right? We want, we, we want all the limbs and legs working together so that we are, are fully functioning in the gifting and the callings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we get ready. Philippians 2.19. Now watch what he says. He says to the Philippians, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly that I might also be encouraged when I know your state. First of all, verse 19, I trust to send. Paul says, I can't get there, but I will be there, and I'm coming in the personhood of Timothy. We need to be raising up people so that when we can't get to the things that we need to get to, that we're still present there. And so we can send others who are of like mind, of like character, character, character. Those who have a devoted lifestyle. Amen. He says, I'll be encouraged when I know your state. In other words, I know Timothy will tell me the truth. He says in verse 20, I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. Verse 21, for all seek their own not the things which are Christ Jesus. Do you see a breakdown right there? It's, it's not that they're wicked people, but they're not looking after Jesus. They're looking after their own. They're searching for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They have their eyes set on things on the earth and not things set above. And he says, well, I need to send Timothy, whether it's Timothy or it's Timothy or somebody else that has that same spirit that's on Timothy to go out. Amen. Look what he says here, verse 22. He says, but you know his proven character. You know him. He's, his, what kind of character is it? Proven. What does that mean? He's been tested. You know, he had write letters to people, be nice to Timothy, don't harm Timothy, show Timothy respect. In other words, he was tested. He went into battlegrounds and places where they rejected him and mistreated him. And so they said, you know what? But look, Timothy's still holding on to character. Told Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. Keep going. Don't give up. Amen? So what he, he says, you know, his proven character that as a son with his father, he served me in the gospel. Is that what it says? No, it doesn't. Let's read that again. As a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. How did Timothy develop character? By walking alongside the tree. The sapling came up alongside the tree. Hallelujah. And so he could be put out. So devotion, Lord, devotion proves your character. Devotion proves your character. Or in other words, you might go through some times and some hardship, and it's the easiest thing to do is to quit. I'm going to just quit, and I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to sit over here where I can feel good about things. Or do you endure? Do you press in? Are you one that says, you know what, things might be hard today, but I know my glory comes tomorrow. My joy comes in the morning. I know that this is a good work. I understand this is ministry. I understand this is priesthood. I understand this is fatherhood. I understand this is young manhood. I understand that this is the calling that God has on my life, and so I'm going to move forward and advance into those deeper things. Amen? Devotion proves character. I was thinking, uh, I, I could bring it up. I was thinking about these, I had to ask these young men to stop talking during the service earlier today. And the first, and they could have got offended and just be like, I'm out of here then. I don't need this. I'm going to go back to that church again. Or they have proven character that they're getting from their fathers and their mothers to be able to say, you know what? I'm going to evaluate this situation. I'm going to find, I'm going to believe that maybe Pastor Dave does have the best interest at heart. And I'm going to grow up. I'm going to be a strong man in the Lord. There's a challenge that is set on the table. Why? Because God does not leave us in a small state. That's a calling up into manhood. It's a calling up into adulthood. It's a calling up into a place of maturity. And we need that. Amen. How many of y'all have ever talked to sternly before? And you quit because of it. I have. <laughs> but I came back. I'm like, yeah. But that proves something. It shows something. I'm not talking about being subject to abuse. I'm talking about being subject to discipline. I'm, being, I'm talking about being subject to direction. 
I th- those are the kind we need to be able to step up into the things that God is calling us up into. Amen? Watch this. We'll go a step further on that because that wasn't where I was going, but let's go there anyways. Priorities reflect true devotion. Your priorities will reflect true devotion. Sometimes our priorities are shaped by our environment. Sometimes our priorities are shaped by our culture, by the world that is set around us. And then we have to make a decision. Am I more devoted to my entertainment or am I more devoted to the calling and the service of the Lord? Am I, am I more devoted to my television set? Am I more devoted uh, to, 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 to gatherings, to, to parties and things like that? Am I more devoted to my politics than I am to answering the, the, the call of God that is set upon my life? You know, sometimes God will partner you up with your people who are not your political allies and say, y'all need to work together on this. Y'all need to come together on this. God sometimes says, you know, I'm going to send you out as a light into a dark place because I need my light to shine there. And nobody else is willing. Nobody else is qualified. Nobody else will fit in. But you become my ambassador and my agent to move into another territory. Would you go if God says go? That's the big question. A lot of people are like, yeah, I'd go, I'd go, I'd go, I'd go. He said go. You said no. <laughs> that can't be God. God wants those people in hell. You're like, no. No, no, no. God wants them redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean they have to agree with you. It just means they got to get redeemed. Praise God. Am I more devoted to my entertainment than I am to the direct communication with God? Am I more? In other words, God has said, come and seek. God has said, come and do. But no, I have to do these other things because this is important to me. It's more important for, for, for me to have this because I can't work all the time. I, I can't do church all, I can't do, I can't do kingdom all the time, but the kingdom's doing you all the time. I'm calling you out from that into this. And so sometimes like, what, what is it that's a priority over a direct communication with God? Better yet, what is it that is a priority over the direct communication from God, from him? God, speak, speak a word to me, God, speak a word to me. God says, okay, I'm going to speak a word to you, but you're not there to receive it or you refuse to get it. Think of it like this. God says, listen, I, I need to hear from you, God. You ever been like my place? God, I just need to hear from you. Imagine God can come down into the earth and says, here's my cell phone number. Call me on Thursday and we'll talk then. And you're going to go, I don't like this phone number. I'm going to call the office and Monday works better for me. That'd be pretty rude, right? That's what a lot of us do. I don't pray at midnight. That's too early for me. It's too hot out. It's too cold out. It's not convenient. Go, go in and speak to this person. And be like, yeah, I don't like that person. Years ago, God healed me of a stomach issue that I had going on. And immediately I lost the healing. But that's okay. He gave me another chance. Praise God. And I'm standing there. I'm at this meeting. And, 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 and while I'm standing there in the meeting, I'm like, yeah, we're singing. We're praising and whatever, and people are going up for prayer. And God said, I want you to go to Tom, and I want you to have Tom pray for you. I said, Tom couldn't pray the fuzz off of a peach. (laughs) Tom is one of the driest people I've ever met before in my life. I need somebody who's going to spit and sweat, pour oil, and go nuts, you know. You ever been in that place before? It's like, no, 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 no. I need Tom. I don't want Tom. I want Jerry, right? And and so you start walking through this thing. But I went down to Tom. I said, Tom, would you pray for me, please? And he's like, well, what do you need prayer for? And I was like, well, I'm not sure, but I think God wants to heal my stomach. And he said, well, uh, yeah, hmm. So God, you know, you know what I'm saying? Bless him. Amen. I went back to my seat and said, well, that was time well spent. And God said, you healed. God healed me. Never went back. Never went back. Never had the issue again. I was like, you know what? I said, God is so faithful. You know, it, it's not about the outward display. It wasn't Tom's prayer. Tom, Tom I don't have the power in prayer to, to release a healing. God does that. It was the obedience. It was the response 
it was my no, 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 no to yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and so it moves you from one place into another, you see? And, and, and hey, Tom, guess what? God, God healed me. When you, and Tom was like, he did? <laughs> did it, me? And he was, he was, did that, that? I'm like, yeah, God, I'm, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. He's like, I'd be careful if I was you, you know. Man. <laughs> and Tom, you need to work on your, your, your prayers, man. <laughs> Tom, dad, you know. But God did heal me, praise God. But somebody, it's, it's about moving out. It's about moving out in obedience and being responsive, you know. And God talks to me. God's talking to people right now. God has been giving you the keys. He's been showing you how to get from A to B, how to get through that gate. And you're still like, nah, 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 not Tom. You're like, listen, <laughs> if God is telling you, call this thing out, call it out. He's telling you, take step forward, take the step forward. He's, he, 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 he's not telling you to take baby steps. He's saying, walk, just walk. But if I walk, I'll fall. He said, every baby falls when they start walking. Right? But, but you got to go take the fall and, and, and trust God will catch you, pick you up, and brush you off. And you get hurt when you fall, trust God will heal you. Amen? But just step out in the, in the deeper things of God. Amen? And so this is something that you know, the, the people will struggle with. It's a struggle that mature people and responsible people will have to overcome. You might not be strong and responsible today, but if you want to get to strong and responsible, you need to overcome some things. You got to overcome this, 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 I'll do it my way. Uh, and, and don't worry, God will do it anyways. And, and all the, you got to get past all of that and say, Lord, I'm coming in compliance today. That in the name of Jesus, Lord, all that I know to do, I'm going to do it, Lord God. I will not move from this spot spiritually until I get a yes from you, an amen from you, a, a direction from you, and to be able to cry out to the Lord, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he, kingdom grow, kingdom grow, and begin to build up on the inside. Come on, stir it up and get going with it. Amen. God is calling us to be a people of faith. Stir up a room. Stir up an atmosphere. Stir up your faith and go and get the things that God has called you to go and get. Right. Amen. Come in here sleepy on Sunday morning. You come in alive. I'm ready to go. And if you're not, find somebody to lay hands on you and say, what do you need? Uh, I need the Holy Ghost. I need to be filled. I need, you. I need to be baptized with fire today. I need to touch the deeper things of God. I need to go for the deeper things. And, you know, and don't tolerate it. You who would say, I am a father in the Lord. I, I'm, I'm on that father level. I'm, I'm ready. And you prove it. Get out there and begin to change an atmosphere. Bring it up. Start in the parking lot. Amen. Amen. Start in the room with somebody coming. Well, you know, I'll fill you with fire. Hallelujah. My bucket overflows. Hallelujah. What was I preaching on today? What's the topic? What a subject. What a subject. Philippians 3.13. Oh, we got to do this. This is great. Philippians 3.13. This is the Apostle Paul. Again, he's talking to the church of Philippi. He's, he's talking to these Philippian people. He's stirring them up. He's giving the example. He says, you know, that, that I was once like you. I was filled with the flesh. If, if anybody could do anything, it was me. I, I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. I was a Pharisee. I was the man. I persecuted the church. I was righteous in God's eyes. I, you know, he, he said, and all these things are counted loss for the knowledge of God. So he's talking about um, he puffed up of himself, puffed up of the world, puffed up of religion, puffed up of all these things. And he says, yeah, then I met Jesus and, and all the air came out and all that was left was this, this burned up, jacked up dude that needed people to lead him around. But look what he says here. I came back. I made a comeback. Philippians 3.13, he says, now my brothers, I do not count myself to have apprehended or in other words, I have not yet arrived. Amen. He says, but one thing I do, one thing I do, one thing I do. Somebody all got to say that in your prayer time. It's like this one thing, God, that I will do. This one thing I do. I forget the things which are behind. In other words, it's not just the things that are in my past. It's the things that are presently behind me. It is the social things that are beneath my platform. But these things, I, I leave them behind. And I'm reaching forward. I'm stretching out for those things which are ahead. Or in other words, I'm not satisfied here. I'm not satisfied on my yesterday. Yesterday, I'm not satisfied in yesterday's suit, but I'm going forward into tomorrow. I'm stretching. I'm stretching out. I'm going for that deeper thing in God. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. 
He said, I'm stretching it out. I'm stretching out into my tomorrow. I press. He said, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of Christ Jesus. Amen. That is good. He said, I'm pressing forward. That means I'm pressed in. And we got to put that in our prayer time sometimes. I don't know what to pray. I don't know, but I know this is not it. And so we begin to cry it out. I press. I press. I press. I don't know what to pray. Press. 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 I pray pressure. I put pressure on it in the name of Jesus. When he says that I press, that literally it means I pursue. I I'm going after it. I can't be stopped. I'm intense. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say, I'm intense. Amen. Praise God. And so he's, I'm exerting pressure. That's powerful. He says there in verse 15, Therefore, let us as many as mature have this mind. Oh, man. If you are mature, think like this. He's like, if you are complete in Christ, think like this, Right? If, if this, this is such a problem. If you are mature in, in these things, think in this particular way. Or in other words, I'm going for that something, but I'm mature and I'm complete because I'm not relying on old religious systems anymore. I'm in Christ and I'm complete. I'm not, I'm not relying on other people to build my spiritual growth and maturity. I'm going after it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not like I once was. That's old stuff. I'm mature now. I've got the fullness of what Christ is calling me up into. I may not have fully attained it yet, but I'm going after it, right? And then he says, but, but even if you think otherwise, like you're mature, but your mind ain't quite right. Anybody, your mind ain't right? He says, God will reveal it. God will take the cover off. God will disclose, legal terms, God will disclose it to you. Even this to you. In other words, I'm not there, but I'm on the right path. Amen. God's not going to leave you back. He's pulling you forward. He's advancing you. Amen? Here's the question. How does God reveal this to you if you're not a devoted student of the word? How does God reveal it to you if you are not a, a, a devoted seeker of his presence? We need to seek his presence. Amen? Sometimes we sit around, we're like, I'm going to just sit here quietly and God will come visit me. I'm like, well, I'm not seeking his presence. That's spiritual laziness. We got to press through and push for the power and the presence of God in our lives. Amen. It was a powerful word. It, it, it's powerful when given its proper context, you know, to be mature, to be perfect, to be complete. It means I've cast off the old religious systems. I'm intense, in other words. I'm, I'm sincere in my pursuit of the kingdom of God. I'm complete, I'm mature. And when we think about this, we're talking about this. I am complete, I am complete and I am mature in the promises of God, in the, in, in the, the, the presence of God, in the prophecy of God, in the principles of the kingdom of God. I am complete in these things. Or in other words, I understand. I understand where I'm coming from. I understand that there are promises I need to put them on. There are principles. I need to operate them. There are prophecy. In other words, prophecy, not like, thus saith the Lord, and there is a word of prophecy over your life. But no, I'm talking about the prophecy, the, the future speaking of the word of God, the Bible, over my life about what it is that I am becoming. Woo. Isn't that good? And if you're not there yet, you will be. <laughs> That's the, if you're mature, you will be, Amen. When Jesus is walking through this, he's dealing, I mean, think about what Jesus being in the wilderness with the devil. Imagine just you and the devil out in the woods. Whoo, buddy. Some of y'all might have had that experience, right? But here he is, he's dealing with these issues. And what does he tell the devil? He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but out of every word that what proceeds that comes forth, that stretches out of the mouth of God. What is he saying? First, he's quoting Deuteronomy, talking about manna coming from heaven and how that manna would only last for a day because you cannot just bread alone, but it's by the word of God that proceeds out of his mouth. Now, I, I understand bread. We understand that's daily substance. We understand that. But I also understand that it's the presence of God. Bread represents the presence of God. He said, so you can't just live by that alone, but by the word that proceeds out of his mouth. That is the prophetic for tomorrow. That, that, is, that is what you are stepping up into, what it is that you are becoming, what the word of God says that you are becoming. Trusting and believing and stepping out in that. And then he's saying, don't be satisfied with your storehouse, but get something fresh every day. It's not just what you know, it's what you're learning. It's not just what you have, it's what you're becoming. Amen. And then you got to add the word, the word that proceeds into your life. And the word that proceeds into your prayers. 
Or in other words, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. But do you pray the word? Do you, do you have scripture that you quote? Do you have even the idea, the ideology of the word of God that you're quoting? Or are you just saying, Lord, I, I just want it. I just want it. This is what I want. This is what I, I know it's your will. But do you have the word to back it up? We've got to go with the word of God. You've got to add word. So sometimes your problems just need the word of God. Amen. God will turn it around upside down. I don't rejoice over me, my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in the darkness, the Lord shall be a light to me. Sometimes we've got to look at dark times and, and praise God because we know that he will be our light. Uh, there's no way out of this unless it's you, God. You, you're the only way. You're the only way. And God's like, I'm coming. I'm coming. That was just, that, what were you waiting for? I was waiting for you to confess that I was the only way. That without me, you could do nothing. I was waiting for you. I was waiting for that word. Amen. And that's why we come back to that in Philippians 4 again. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. That when we come with prayer and with supplication and with thanksgiving, thanksgiving comes with honor. Thanksgiving comes with honor. So we start to now bring honor into the, I know God that you will do this. I know you are an honorable king. I know you are the savior, the redeemer, and that you are my high priest. I know that you are not only the way, you are my way in, my way out. That you, you know, to, to understand, this is, I have dwelling places built for me in the high places with him. And that's where I am going. When I get up out of here, that's where you can find me. Hallelujah. Amen. To know the deeper things of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got one more point, but I'm not giving it to you today. Hallelujah. Was it good? Yeah. You know, got something out of this? All right. Well, let me, let me close. I'll give you the point. Let me give you the point, and then I'm going to close in prayer. But the, 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 the last point was this. Develop and control. Develop and control an environment for growth. Develop and control an environment for growth. Oh, we'll get into this next week because it's so important. But it really does come back around to devotion. Setting things up, and not just setting them up structurally in your time and in the earth, but setting them up God's way. God reveals every obstacle that you will ever face to spiritual growth. Because God does not want you to be a spiritually immature or spiritual baby. He wants you to prosper in all things. 3 John 1, 2. The apostle writes, Beloved, my beloved children of God, hallelujah. I pray, watch what he says here, that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Just as your soul prospers. A lot of times we hear about prosperity, we first we start thinking about his money. Start thinking about who's going to get rich. Start thinking about those kinds of things. That's an abuse of the word of God. Prosperity is something of the soul and of the spirit. Prosperity is of the kingdom of God, that we grow in these things. We grow in all things. And look what John says. He said, I rejoice greatly when, when, when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you. Just as you walk in the truth, he said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. He said, I want you to see that point there. No, no greater joy than to know. He said, it's my children. He says, they're my children. Or in other words, I have invested into you. I've come. I've been where you are. And now I have given you the word of God. I've given you the entrance way. And there is no greater joy than to know that the seed that I have sown is, is, is producing for the kingdom of God. And it is producing inside of you. That we come to this place in the kingdom of God now where we think so much about me, my situation, my house. God is like, get outside of yourself. Seek the kingdom of righteousness. Every other thing will be added to it. That God has said, I want, you, I want you on point. I want you on the bench. I want you on the bar. I want you on the floor to, 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 to pray for your neighbors, your brothers, your sisters in the Lord. If you put them ahead of yourself, God says, I've got you. You're like, do is this. Trust fall. Do, you know, trust me, says God, that you'll be able to receive everything that you have need of. But the focus has to get beyond you. Get to the place of your assignment. And watch, when you start doing your assignment, your spiritual growth will go through the chart. It will go off the roof. Off the chart, through the roof. That's what I was going for. Off the chart, through the roof. Lord, take me off the chart and bring me through the roof. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's close. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all got blessed today? You get it? You get it? Are you planted to prosper? You're planted for prosperity in Christ? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. As we're closing, yeah, just take two seconds right there. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord, for the word today. I pray that release of that word in this room. The word of God is like a man who scatters good seed.